The United States Supreme Court has recently overruled Roe versus Wade, but when does that ruling actually take effect? My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney in San Antonio, Texas, who practices family law, and I was once a briefing attorney for the Fourth Court of Appeals. And many people are confused about the fact that the United States Supreme Court has made this decision and they think abortion is immediately illegal everywhere. And that's absolutely not what the Supreme Court said. What the Supreme Court said was, we're taking our hands off of this. It's gonna be a question for each individual state to decide. And so the Roe versus Wade is overruled and each state makes their own laws concerning abortion. A number of states have said, we're not gonna change anything. If they do nothing, then the law doesn't change in those states. And abortion is still allowed in places like California because they have clearly said, we are not going to prohibit abortion. But in other states, they said, yes, we do want to prohibit abortion. Now, it takes a long time, generally, for a law to get changed. A law has to be drafted, and the bill has to go to committee, and the committee releases it, and then it gets voted on by the House, and it gets voted on by the Senate. And um, our Texas legislature only meets every other year. It only meets in odd-numbered years. And so they anticipated, what if this ruling comes out in an even-numbered year, like 2022, and we're not even in session until 2023, and then we gotta get the, the bill through Congress, and it could be a year before we actually get to change our law here in Texas. And so in anticipation that the United States Supreme Court might rule this way, they passed in the last session a trigger law. Now, a trigger law has nothing to do with a, a gun. What it's saying is the United States Supreme Court decision is the trigger. Once the United States Supreme Court decision goes final that says we have the power to do this, 30 days later, this law goes into effect. If the United States Supreme Court never goes final, then our law never goes into effect because the trigger is never pulled on it. Um, but Texas and a number of other states do have these laws that say 30 days after the United States Supreme Court um, ruling goes into effect, then our new law goes into effect prohibiting abortion. Okay, so is the United States Supreme Court decision now final? No, it doesn't actually go final until sometime at the end of July. Because you see, there is a process called the mandate process that a lot of people are not aware of. Um, I, when I was on the Fourth Court of Appeals, a lot of people were not aware. Whenever a decision is publicly announced, um, it is about 25 days later that the United States Supreme Court will issue what's called the mandate, and that is um, a certificate that says this is the official final ruling, and they're sending that ruling back to the court where it came from. Because you see, cases can get up to the United States Supreme Court in a number of ways. This particular case came through the state court system. If a if a decision has gone to the highest court in a state, which in Texas is the Texas Supreme Court, and that case uh, involves an issue of the United States Constitution, then the parties can appeal the, United, the Texas Supreme Court case to the United States Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court doesn't have to take the case they have total discretion to say, nah, we're not gonna hear that one, or to take it. If they take the case, then it takes them quite a while to actually hear the case, get briefs filed, make their decision. So people have known that this case was, was pending for a long time. But um, when it came up through the state court, the United States Supreme Court has to send the mandate back down to the court where the case came from to order Texas court or whatever the highest court is that sent that case to them 
um, to do what that says. So even though everyone knows what the decision says, it's been written, it's been dispersed, it's been publicly announced, it's still 25 days before it becomes final. Now, can it be changed during that 25 days before it becomes final? Yes, but it's extremely rare and it's not expected to happen in this case. Um, one way it could be changed, the Supreme Court could always just change their mind on their own and say, never mind, we, we, we want to modify this or change it. We, we don't want to issue it. Uh, we're, we're not going to go with what we originally said. That almost never happens. Um, or there could be a motion for rehearing filed. Now, again, the Supreme Court doesn't have to rehear the case just so, because somebody asked them to. <clears throat> but the uh, losing party can ask the court to rehear the case. And the Supreme Court can uh, issue an extension of time and say, well, we're not going to have the mandate go into effect immediately. Or they can just put everything on hold while they reheard the case and maybe make a different decision after they've reheard the case. Again, nobody expects the Supreme Court to accept a motion for rehearing to allow this case to be delayed. And so that's why everyone is, is preparing for the law to change. But it actually hasn't changed until the mandate is issued. And so why did some abortion clinics shut down immediately in Texas? Well, it could be that they didn't understand the mandate process and they thought that the law was in effect immediately. But um, it is also because the uh, Attorney General of Texas said, since our law in Texas already prohibited abortion, now that Roe versus Wade has been overruled, as soon as it becomes final, our old law goes into effect. We don't have to wait the 30 days later for the trigger law to go into effect. However, they do still have to wait for the United States Supreme Court decision to become final and the mandate to be issued. So they really couldn't do anything before the end of July anyway, and maybe not till the end of August. Um, but some of the abortion clinics in Texas did shut down and then immediately appealed to the district court to say, um, will you put a restraining order on the attorney general and tell him he cannot sue us until this decision becomes final? Why is the restraining order only 14 days? Well, that's because a restraining order is one that goes into effect with only one party's argument. The abortion clinic argues, please put a restraining order on the attorney general. And the court listens to that argument and says, okay, we're going to restrain him, but for no longer than 14 days, because in that 14 days, we're going to allow there to be another hearing. And at the second hearing, we allow the attorney general to come in and argue why they should not be restrained. And so there will be a second hearing where both sides argue before the court and the court decides if they're going to keep that restraining order in place longer than 14 days or if they're going to just dismiss it immediately. And so <clears throat> it's very temporary that this restraining order is in effect and um, during that 14 day time period, the mandate hasn't issued anyway. I guess maybe they were anticipating what if the mandate comes out early, but um, that doesn't change the overall ruling. Um, this, this temporary restraining order that's in effect doesn't change the fact that once the mandate is issued, the United States Supreme Court decision is in effect, it is final, and it must be obeyed by all lower courts. And so this decision has not been changed by the restraining order. It's simply been delayed a little bit. They cannot overrule the United States Supreme Court.